do praise and honor the Lord tonight for His goodness and His mercy. God, He's been good to me. Everyone, I, I appreciate Him for His grace. Glad of everybody that's with us tonight. I'd like to talk to us a little bit and help the good Lord. I'd like to tell you if the Lord is dealing with your heart to pray, then you need to pray. The only time that we can have audience with the Father is when He'll grant it to us. If the Lord is dealing with you to pray, you be sure that you don't leave here tonight without praying. I thought in the book of John in the 20th chapter. In the 19th verse. The Bible said then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, which was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. And he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails. Put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. And saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believe me. Thomas answered, said unto him, My Lord and my God, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believe me, you might have life through His name. So maybe it's a, this began to get upon my heart. Maybe kind of fitting for this weekend when the world wants to observe <coughs> Easter weekend. And I thought maybe I'd begin to in my heart, go back to this what started out a sad situation. Uh, we find the disciples broken, their hearts broken, fear upon them. They was afraid. For the one that they had believed and had taught and ate with and slept out in the wilderness with and heard him preach and uh, one walked on the water with him saw him raise the dead heal the sick 
They're the same one they thought uh, told the people was the, the anointed king of Israel. They'd seen this same man murdered. They'd seen him whipped worse than any animal. They'd seen him brought as a reproach, made to a curse. They saw him give up the ghost. They saw him maybe took that off the cross and placed into the tomb. Yeah, I thought maybe how that you read that 19th verse, you'll see that they were locked in uh, the room where they were at. Why were the door shut? Uh, they was afraid. They were fearing for their lives. They was afraid of what the Jews might do to them. Stay right with me tonight. Yeah, my brother. I thought maybe how that the Lord began to tell Simon Peter before all this took place, He said, Satan desired to have you that he might sift you as wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith would fail you not. And He went a little further and He said, and when you're converted, you go and strengthen the brethren. Glory to God. I want you to know that the men that went in here in this room on that same day, the Bible said the same day that the Lord rose, the same resurrection day, these men went in heartbroken, spirits low, doubting and unbelieving. They went in wounded. Glory to God, they went out. Their faith was broken. Their faith was shaken. They thought that there was no hope. That there was no help. That there was nobody that could move now that the Lord and Savior was gone. They forgot that He told them that on the third day they would rise again. They didn't remember till after these things came to pass. They forgot that He said, destroy this temple. And on the third day, I'll build it again. I'll raise it again. They had forgot. They were in a state of no hope. They were in a state of death. A state without faith. They were men that were wretched and pitiful. There you go. I want you to know something took place. Something took place on that day. They went in one way, but they come out another way. Hello, church. I felt this upon my heart. Feel the hand of God upon my soul. Glory to God, they had to come and change. Yes, they've been taught about the Lord. Yes, they had said that they had believed. But on this day, they come a change in their life. They went in broken, but they come out healed. What happened, church? Happy Lord. They became men that didn't just believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They came out of their men that knew He was the Son of God. They didn't just believe in the resurrection. They knew because they laid eyes on the resurrection. Amen. That you know, that you know, that you know. Right. Well, Lord, do you really believe? Amen. Do you believe in the Son of the living God? Amen. Do you believe Amen. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God? Amen. I told him, John, baptizing down yonder in Jordan River. And he began to look up. His old cousin Jesus come walking by. And he began to look up. He said, Behold! which takes away the sin of the world. Do you believe in our church that He is who He said He was? Thank you. I thank God for what I know. I thank Him for what He let me feel. I thank Him that I've been born again of the water and of the Spirit. The more we go, the better I feel. Do you know that you know that you know that you know you know? Hello, children. Glory, glory. To be where you are among the people that you're sitting with, 
with the Spirit that is moving in our midst. Do we really realize how blessed that we are? There's got to be a change come for me and you. You can't just believe. Oh, I mean, God, what you've been taught about Jesus, but there comes a day and a time you got to know for yourself. Amen. They went in one way, but they come out another way. They went in broken and heartbroken. They went in with their face shattered. And the door was shut. Yeah. They was afraid of their life. They, they just took the Lord, this man that had all this power, they just took him and killed him. They was afraid for their life. Yeah, my brother. Oh, what began to happen, Brother Floyd? Thank God. I look at us tonight. We got folks that's gathered out here. And some of you, your faith is shaking. Some of you, you're shattered. Your heart broken. Troubled in spirit. Troubled in mind. Troubled in body. Oh, but if we could just get the Lord to have His way while He's here. Amen. If we can just get our mind in the same place with the Spirit, you can lead this house of God tonight a different way than you came in. Glory to God. Are we just going through the motion? Or do we know this man from Galilee? Do we know that sea walker? Do we know that tongue talker? Do we know that doctor? That lawyer? Do you know the King of Kings? We just go through the motion. 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 Glory, 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 glory. They went from men that were just believing to men that were knowing. They went from believing to knowing. Now do you believe tonight or do you know? Do you believe? Or do you know? For yourself. Glory to God. Thomas wasn't with them. Say what you want to about Thomas. Mm, but you wasn't there. You wasn't in his shoes. You don't know what you'd say. Hey, some tonight they're doubting the Lord and what He said He would do. Come on. Mm, they some tonight doubt what God would do in your life for you. So let's give Thomas a little mercy. He began to tell me, said, "Except I would behold and I'd look upon the nail prints. Except I'd take my finger and feel the nail prints in His hand, have the wound in His side." He said, I will not believe. Happy Eight days later, in that same place, as the door was locked again, Jesus stepped forth in the midst of them. And I love the way He did it. He was already gone when Thomas said what He said. But when the Lord came back, He came back for Thomas. Amen. He said, Thomas, come here. Well, 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 well. Come here, Thomas. Come to me. He begin to reach the nail scarred hands out. You know what I believe tonight? I believe the Lord is still reaching those same nail scarred hands out to men and women around the world. Amen. They still say I will not believe. It's just the way the Lord gave it to me. Do you know what you got? Them men was in bad shape. Oh, when Jesus came and they beheld that man for themselves. And they saw the power of God. They saw the Son of God risen. They saw Him resurrected. They went from men that was locked in a room somewhere hiding to men that went out into all the known world and was willing to stand before kings and rulers. Well, well, well. Why were they willing to do that? They weren't men that just been told what had happened, but these were men that got some experience. They knew for themselves what they saw, and they were willing. They believed it enough. They knew. They knew what God had done. So they got willing, brother, to get out of the room, go out beyond the door, go out to the face of the world, and stand with your life in your hand and bear witness about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Do you know? Do you believe? Where are you tonight? Happy Lord. You went in one way. You come out another way. Well, well, well. 
them. I thought they began to sing a while ago. They began to sing about see the bright light shine. Uh, they begin to sing it's just about hope. The hope in you. They went on down in the song and began to sing. And I've never been in this whole city before. Well, let me ask you something. When they sung it tonight, did you, <coughs> did you mean it from your heart? Right, hmm? right. And the Lord tried to move at the first of the service. Yeah. And the people sat back. Right. Well, it's one thing to sing, see the bright light shine, there's something else. When they began to get on CC there, and she was a singing from her heart. Yeah. And she was singing about their light shine. And she was meaning it from her heart. I've never been this homesick before. I thought they began to sing about that road. Well, well, well. Glory to God. They began to sing about going to heaven. And the people began to sing. You know where we're at? We really don't believe like they say we do. When you get that joy down in there, they'll say heaven. It'll make you happy. They'll say Jesus. It'll make you weep for joy. When you get it just right. Listen to me tonight. Where are you? They went in one way, but they come out another way. They had an experience. Oh, children, what a difference that it makes. What a difference that a little experience for yourself will make. Amen. Then we don't sing a song we heard somebody else sing. But we sing it because it testifies about our experience with God. We don't give a testimony somebody else gave. But we stand up and we tell that that we know. That that we've seen. That that we've lived. Where are you tonight, church? You my brother, Lord. You believe it's about home time? What no fear of going priest before men that could have them killed because they'd already seen that God could give them life back. Huh? They knew what they had. They knew about the gospel. They knew that that they'd been taught. They knew that it was right. They went from just simply believing something to know it. So where are we at tonight? Where are you at tonight? Have you ever seen a time when people will have no joy? Now the world, they got their joy in the things they do. I'm talking about the children of God. Where's their joy at tonight? God got to cover you up for you to raise your hands. They say, thank you, Father, that you sent your Son. And He gave His life. Whereby I might be saved. What are we waiting on, children? I tell you what's wrong. Many times we're too spoiled. We're too satisfied with this world. You can't sing. Never been this homesick before. If your pleasure's in this world, hello, you get your joy from this world. You ain't homesick. You're home. Hello, somebody. Glory to God. There's got to be a change. There's got to be a change. Where is the zeal, children? Where is the love for God? Where is the love for the Word of God? Where is the Holy Ghost? Where is the fire going to? Where is the zeal that was in your life? God ain't changed. God never will change. That Holy Ghost, that fell on the day of Pentecost, is still the same. Holy Ghost, right now, we have changed. Amen. Men have changed. Do you know what some of us need? Yeah. We need to be like the disciples. And have a good old fashioned experience with ourselves right. and God. Do you believe what you believe because you was told to? Or do you believe what you know to be right? Yeah, Lord. Or do you believe it because somebody told you? Or do you pray until you felt the hand of God? <laughs> and I want to know. Have you felt the hand of God? Do you know what His Spirit feels like? Do you know what it feels like when you pray and you touch God? Do you know that you know that you know you know? You think these things this day and age? You've seen nothing yet, church. You've seen nothing yet. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Amen. You know who's going to make it? Those that know their God. Those that have got the experience that are willing to go and stand 
when nobody else will stand. They're willing to tell the truth when nobody else will stand and tell the truth. They're willing to live for God when everybody else wants to go another way. Amen. I promise you one thing. The Jonah that come out of that whale was a different Jonah than the one that went in. Amen. Amen. And oh, the children. Here we are at the end days. Here we are at them days. All these old men of God you love so dear that's gone on. They preached to you and told you about this day that would come. They told you to get ready. They told you to pray and lay up store of grace. They told you to get as close to God as you could. They said there'd be a day when the love would leave from among God's people. And we're there right now. We're there right now. And it ain't going to be somebody that can only stand for God when things are going good that's going to make it. It's going to be that one that can stand in the valley and still stand for God. The one that's willing to get down and crawl in order to climb the mountaintop. That's the one that's going to make it. The one whose heart is in this thing. Is your heart in serving God? Is your love in this? Thank you for what I feel and what I know. My brother, Lord. Do you know what you got is real? They say you don't. I'm just that's a question. Do you know what you have? Is real. Huh? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know what you got? You ever feel it? They tell you something. It's not the same thing you feel at the ball game. <laughs> That's the flesh you feel at the ball game. Amen. Amen. You young folks, I mean, little old love story. That ain't, that ain't the spirit of the Lord you feel. That's your flesh. Amen. What you feel. I'm talking about the spirit of the living God. I'm talking about do you know that you know that you know you know. Well, do you know this Holy Ghost that we talk about? Mm. Okay, they had some experiences after that day. First, they met the Son of God risen. And He reassured them that God will do just what He said. And then they was told, I want you to go down to Jerusalem. And I want you to turn. I want you to wait. Could you receive that promise? My Father told you what He's going to do. I preached it to you and told you what's going to happen. And I want you to go down and I want you to pray. I want you to wait till you receive that promise. He said you receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Well, 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 do you know that you know that you know you know? Surely somewhere in the house of God. Surely under the sound of my voice, there's somebody that knows about the Spirit of the living God that does not need pumped, He don't need primed, He don't need worked up, but He is found by the meek and the lowly. He is found by the man or the woman in trouble. He is found by all that come out before God. Surely there's somebody that knows that you know, that you know you know. You know that you know you know. Glory to God, church. Glory to God. Do you know about this Holy Ghost we talk about? There had to be a change come. There had to be a change come. When the Lord breathed on. Receive you the Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> he sanctified them. You know what, Charlie? They need to know what it was when He came. They need to know. That's why. You have been breathed on, my Lord. <laughs> I feel so sorry for these young Christians because I don't know that they know that they know anymore. 
So they go home, I'm what they've been told me. That's good. But I'm asking you tonight, do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had the Lord breathe on you? Have you ever had the Lamb of God breathe on you? Do you know what that mighty rushing wind feels like? Do you know what that gentle breeze across the streets of glory feels like? Do you know what the Spirit of the living God feels like? Do you know that you know, you know, you know? Do you know, church? Do you know for yourself? Do you have this in your soul? Do you possess this night. Amen, Lord. Amen, Lord. Amen. They went from that little room, locked in and shut in in fear. The Lord sent them to the upper room. And they tarried. He was there some 40 days afterwards. Pentecost is 50 days after. So somewhere between a week to ten days after the Lord left them, they tarried. Mm -hmm. Hello. Glory to God. Do you know what they did? Had nobody ever been baptized with the Holy Ghost before. But they all gathered in. They were looking. Did you gather in tonight looking for the promise of God? Did you come out tonight looking for God to manifest His Spirit somehow? Did you come to church looking for help? Did you come expecting help? I'd like to tell you right now, right in front of your eyeballs, there's help on, in this man. building tonight. Right in the midst of your broken heart, your shattered faith, your doubt and unbelief, there's help in this building tonight. But you've got to know. You've got to know. You've got to know. Where are you at tonight? Where are you at tonight? Where is the house of God? Where does she stand tonight? Where are the children of God? Where are those that knows what the preacher's talking about? When I tell you about a God that understands every situation. If you're not being in many situations and you really don't know, I'm talking about those that's been destitute, those that's been desperate. Those that's had the experience of wringing your hands and worrying and wondering where the Lord is He going to move. I'm talking about those that's had the sleepless nights. Those that's had those long weeping hours. Tears rolling down. Can't even hardly put it into words. I wonder if anybody here tonight that knows about a God that still answers prayer. Well, He's become kind of a story to this generation. He become man in some kind of fairy tale to this age that we're living in. Man that rejects God, living in a nation turning from God, a nation that no longer wants Jesus mentioned. Anything else is all right, but leave out the Lamb of God. I'm not much, but I still believe Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God, and I know. I know He still sets men free. Amen. I know He is the only way to heaven. Amen. I know He is the only one that can baptize with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I know He'll heal your body. I know He'll save your children. I know that He'll answer prayer. Amen. Well, they went in one way, church, and they come out another way. Imagine how low they was in their life, how low they were in their walk with God. Everything they thought they believed was took from them. Their whole world was turned upside down. They didn't know what to do. And above all that, the Lord's body was gone. Oh, children, it would have been easy. If all this had just been a story, it would have been so easy to disprove it. All they had to do was show the Lord's body. And you and I would still be lost. Mm -hmm. But you know what I know? I know that they had no body that they could show them. Amen. Because the tomb was empty. Amen. <laughs> there was no body to show. Because the Spirit of God come into that little old tomb where never a man had laid before. And the Father raised up the Son. They took them grave clothes and Put them on one side. It took an old grave mask, that napkin off, and he folded it up. 
she laid it to her in. And after all that was said and done, I know that I know that I know I know that the Son of God got up and he walked out of the yeah. I know for 40 days afterwards he was singing at one time above 500 men at one time. I know that I know I know. What about you? Yeah. What about you? Do you know? Yes, this one might let down, that one might let down, this one's left away, that one's left away, church is falling apart. But do you know that you know, you know, you know? Amen. And coming a man one day, he's going to stand. He's going to stand in the face of this world. And he's going to call fire down out of heaven. And people are going to say, that's him. You know who's going to say that's him? Those that don't know. Yeah. Those that think that they know, but they really don't know that they know that they know they know. He's going to call them down and say, that's him. And the whole world, children, when the Bible said the whole world, it means the whole world. Amen. It's going to wander after the beast. The whole world. You know who's not going to wander after him? Them true born sons of the Lord. Them truly, true blood bought children of God that was told there ain't no need to go wandering after the Lord because when He comes, He's going to send His angels and they're going to gather His elect. There's going to be no need, Brother Charlie, for me to go and hunt the Lord down because if I'm ready when He comes, the big angel's going to come and He's going to take me. Amen. And I'm going to be with the Lord forever in the earth. Amen. And I know that I know that I know I know He's coming back. Amen. Look around and see. Men and women wore out. Tired of the fight. Tired of the battle. Their faith is broken. Giving up on oh God. Going another way. Letting down. Letting in. Giving up. Look where you at. When the leader of the largest denomination of worldly people, the you know, Pope, stood forth and addressed the Muslims as his brothers and sisters, what do you think it was? He's trying to pull them together. Satan's going to gather his people together first. They're going to rise up against the children of God. And I know that I know that I know I know that. Because this book tells me something. And the Holy Ghost tells me something. You better go from just coming out to church. You better get a hold of a fire. You may sit here tonight and the Lord will give you the Holy Ghost. But if you let that fire go out in your life, I'm telling you where I'm standing right now, you better get a hold of that fire like you one time had. You better get back to that that you one time knew. Glory to God. That that was good enough for Mama ought to be good enough for me and you. Amen. That that worked for Grandma and Grandpa is the same thing that will work today if me and you will come down like they did to get a hold of what they got a hold of. Amen. It's just ahead, little children. Amen. Let me ask you again. These men went from hiding. The eleven of them that was right. Later they replaced Judas' seat, but at that time the eleven of them that was right. When he come back, Thomas was with them. Those men went from hiding to the upper room. And he went from the upper room, and every one of them but John died for the word of God. <clears throat> All these people that might die over something somebody else told them. But if what you have you know to be a lie, you're not going to lay down and die over it. That's true. If you know it's a lie, you'll just recant and save your own life. But every one of these men saved John and don't think he got by easy. They were beheaded. One was skin alive. That's true. They threw James off the pinnacle of the temple, beat him with a fuller's club. In other words, knocked his brains out. They stoned him. 
And oh, they threw them to the beasts. They bring the Christians out and make sport of them. Let the lions have everybody in town gather around and watch them tear them to pieces. If it started to get night time, they just put them on a stake and set them on fire. Use them as torches so they could still keep their games going. Hmm? Hello. Hmm? I'm not telling you some fairy tale. I'm telling you what's happening. And I'm trying to tell you what lies just ahead. Do you know what they had? They had an unwavering faith in God. They knew of God. They knew Him. They knew His Son. They knew the Holy Ghost. They knew the power of God. They was willing. All they had to do at any time was deny the Lord. Where's our people at now? Where are we at now? See, none of us been used as a torch. Hmm? You've not had to watch your children be thrown to wild animals. Hmm? Brothers, you not had to watch your wife be done wrong. Hmm? Where are we at? Where are we at right now? That if God don't move right now, right then and there, are we ready to quit and walk off and leave it? You know why? Because we don't believe it like we say we do. Jesus is the only way out of here. He's the only way to safety. He is the only way. The only one that's going to make it through Him. Now do you know that you know that you know you know? Hmm? Are you living this because of what Mama told you? See, there comes a time we got to sit down at the table and just calm down and listen. Amen. Listen to me. Not because of me, but who? Who moves up on me? I can't sit at the house and think these things up and write these things down. I've got to let the Lord move on me and bring this to you. Do you know? We'll ask you something to sound like a silly question in the house of God. You believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Amen. Amen. I want you from your heart. Yes. No. A while ago when Jamie told about the Lord moving on that child and taking that cancer, I said cancer and they can't find it. We gave one of the weakest thank you lords that I've heard in a long, long time. That's right. Now I'm asking you again, do you really believe Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God? Amen. That there is no other name given whereby we must be saved. We must be saved. There is no other name. Do you believe that? Yes, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe in heaven? Do you believe in hell? Amen. You know, we don't need to. We don't have to preach. We don't have to preach. The beauty of heaven to get people to pray. We need to talk about the reality of hell. Amen. Do you believe in the hell? Amen. Somebody's listening to me, Pat. Come on, Jesus. Do you believe that there's a hell? You kind of open look when they're tired, been a lot of shopping, getting ready for Easter. Do you believe that there's a hell? Amen, Jesus. Oh, What's the only way out, Ron? Who is the only way out? Jesus Christ. It's a bigger hand than mine working here tonight. You can't feel it, you just pray to me. Do you know that there's a hell? Do you know that there's only one way out? Amen. Do you know His name is Jesus? Help my brother. Have your way, good man. Have your way, Lord. Are you ready to go? Amen.
Do you know that you know? Do you know? We got to answer that call. We got to set the baby aside. Yeah, right. Crawl in the altar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got to lay the trouble aside. Yeah. We got to crawl in the altar. Yeah. Oh, we got to lay the burden down. We yeah. got to crawl in the altar. We got to have a talk with Jesus. Yeah. Well, glory to God. Thank you. Amen. 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 They were afraid. They were afraid. But Jesus showed up. And when Jesus showed up, they got their faith back. They got their hope back. They got a hold of some joy. Would you like to have some joy? <laughs> Can you hear that? You know what? Instead of choking them tears back on you, there we go. Do you know that you know that you know you know? Y'all got some? We won't be all going to say or not. That down to us too quick. Somebody needs help. Amen. The Lord is able to change your life. Amen. I'm not talking about this feeling a little bit better. I'm talking about a whole new life. I'm talking about a man that can take your ever sin. Take his big hand and wipe all of it off your record. Take everything you've ever been ashamed of. Just wipe your life. Erasing a chalkboard. Just wipe it all away. Amen. Can't nobody else do it but Jesus. Sing. 